Okay, what I want to talk about today is uh, a concept that pervades a lot of uh, the readings and the discussions that we do that is hidden but scary, hidden but problematic, and it's the concept of cultural evolution. Um, cultural evolution is the notion that cultures, groups of people, go through an evolutionary process similar to biological evolution, Darwinian evolution. That a group will move from one stage of development up to another stage of development, up to another stage of development. And this understanding is an assumption that a lot of authors use, including a lot of the authors that we read in the core. And it has some problems to it. What I want to point out is the problems, the things that we want to be aware of if we are teaching authors that use this assumption. So, um, you'll often see it flagged by vocabulary. Uh, the cultural evolutionary model I'm going to draw for you here. It starts at the top with uh, a group called the civilized. And then there are two other groups below this in traditional cultural evolution. The barbarians. And the savages. And these can be used as adjectives or nouns. You can talk about a civilized group of people versus a savage group of people, or people actually refer to as savages, etc., etc. Um, but this is a model that was constructed uh, shortly after the Enlightenment. Actually, roots go back further than that. Um, but the idea of it was that you could understand groups of people by where they were on this developmental model. And this is understood as a developmental model. And it's a linear developmental model that the notion is everybody starts here in the savage. And all groups of people started out prehistorically as savage. Some groups, given enough time, developed into barbarians. And then later on, some of these folks developed into the civilized people. Well, there are a couple of issues with this. These should be obvious, but let's point them out together. First of all, this is a model that was made by the civilized folks, shockingly. So, obviously, they're going to put themselves at the top of any hierarchical model. And everybody who doesn't belong in this group is, therefore, somehow less than, not as developed as, not as progressed as. Um, these people are primitive. I'm using the annoying academic air quotes for a reason, because these are terms that get used by authors that uh, then carry along all sorts of other meanings that aren't appropriate. Now, what were the things that uh, marked the civilized? Things like high level of organization politically, high level of organization religiously, uh, people living in high population density cities, um, as opposed to people who are in the barbarian category, living, living in lower population density, lower level of technology, lower level of uh, family organization, all the way down to savages who had very, very low population density, very, very low level of technology. Now, again, high, low, these are value-laden terms. The model is hugely value-laden. People in the civilized group, we're looking at people who put themselves in the civilized group. We're looking at people they put in the barbarian group and people they put in the savage group and saying they're less developed somehow based on the fact that we use refined metals. They use stone tools. That's a technological development. That's a technological difference. And if these people are using stone tools, that means they're not as developed as. Well, the problem with that is there are plenty of people walking around on Earth today who make and use stone tools. Are they less developed? Are they less modern? Are they more primitive? No, they've gone through the same amount of time. Their group of people has gone through the same amount of development as people in this group. They just haven't developed the same things. These categories aren't necessarily the problem with cultural evolution. This is. There's this notion that if people are down here, they are down here because they just haven't gotten around to getting up here yet. And if people are in this group, it's just because they haven't developed enough to be in this group yet. This linear model that everybody is, given enough time, inevitably, inevitably going to go up. And if they haven't, that's somehow problematic. That is a huge assumption. It happens to be false, based on all the people who study this for a living. And it is an insidious assumption that shapes a lot of the ways that people express understandings of groups who aren't themselves in a lot of the readings that we do in the core, in a lot of the ways we discuss things. This assumption, this model is false, but this model is an assumption that a lot of people still work with, that you can make these divisions and that these divisions have some sort of hierarchy to them, that 
this is more developed than that, that this is more developed than that, or conversely, this is less developed than that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, it doesn't take too much stretching of your brain to start to see the racism in here, because guess who's in this group? European Drive folks. Guess who's in groups down here and here? People from elsewhere. Um, this model was used to justify a lot of uh, colonial processes, and still is, in a lot of ways. Um, you can see this model being used as an assumption in a lot of uh, discussions about uh, things like race, class, even gender. Um, down here, people are less civilized. They're more natural, which might, be, might sound like it's a compliment, but if people down here are more natural, that means they're more guided by emotion less guided by rationality. Well, let's think back. Historically, what are some groups that were put into that category described as being more emotional, less guided by reason? Non-white, non-European folks, women, um, children. A lot of groups that are disenfranchised are disenfranchised by this model. This model is used to say, you are somehow lesser than, and therefore it is perhaps appropriate that we colonize you, or perhaps it is appropriate that you don't get to vote. Or perhaps it's appropriate that you don't get to own property. Very few people will overtly say they use this model, but a lot of people use this model. It's an assumption that they work with that they then use as a foundation stone to build their logic when they're talking about group who's me and group who's not me, groups here, groups there. And the insidiousness of it that we often copy that we often buy into and that we often replicate when we're trying to explain and discuss groups elsewhere, it undercuts anything we're trying to teach about identity, about group identity, about culture. That's all I had to say.